Hello, welcome back to the Rusty Maths channel. In this video, we are going to talk about bar charts. Now, this is a three-part video. In this one, we're just going to talk about simple bar charts. But in the other two videos, I'll talk about stacked bar charts and also comparative bar charts. Look out for those coming soon. But without any further ado, let's jump into this video. Okay, so I am going to try and pack quite a lot into this video in hopes that you can learn a lot about bar charts. And, in, and also, I'm going to try and apply it to something real and tangible so that you'd understand the importance of this really, really simple topic. So here, I have got the beginnings of my bar chart. I'm going to now demonstrate how to draw a bar chart, what are the rules around it, and then we'll look at this question that we have in particular here. So right in front of us, we have got um, a situation where I live in a village and the ice cream man or woman or person comes down to the village every day or so to sell some ice cream. And I want to simulate, let's say you own a business or you are working for someone that owns the business. Now I completely made these numbers up. They're coming to sell some ice cream in my little village. And when they sell these ice creams, they want to represent it as a bar chart to just to get some information. Let's see what we can get. So from here, you can see that when they come to the village, um, they normally sell on that day 25 van um, strawberry ice creams, 10 vanilla, 5 pistachio, 15 mint choc chip, and then some other miscellaneous ice cream. So now I'm going to represent this information on a bar chart. So here we go. So first of all, I need to look at my biggest number. My biggest number here is 25. So when I go up on my frequency axis, this is called the frequency axis, I'm going up to 25. So I'll pick a nice scale starting on zero here, five, 10, 15, 20 and 25 there. So that's my number of ice cream sold. And then down the bottom, I'm going to have the flavors. And if you are in America and you're watching this and you see me spell flavor with a U, I'm so sorry I offended you, but here in England, we spell it with a U. So here we go. So now I'm going to, I'm going to start putting my bars on. So my first bar needs to be um, as tall as 25. So I'm just going to move my bar into position. That's going to be my first bar there. And then I'm going to make it a little bit taller so it reaches up to 25 like that. Now, uh, my next bar needs to be 10. We can skip from here onwards because you know what I'm going to do next. Now I've got my bar chart drawn. There are a few things I want to point out. So first of all, look at each of your numbers and make sure your bar is just as tall as is required there. So this one needs to go to 25, this one to 10, this to 5, to 15 as matching there, and this to 10 for the other. The other thing that you need to be careful of with bar charts is they should not be touching each other at all. That's a separate graph. That's going to be for our comparative bar chart, which I will show you in the next video. And also, when you do histograms, those ones are touching each other. You can check out that video also in the description. The other thing about it is the width of each bar needs to be the same. So you shouldn't have varying widths. The widths need to be the same. And the space, the gaps between each of the bars need to also be the same. Okay, and that's basically it. Now, now that we've got the bar chart drawn and we've got it all labeled up and everything like that, what information can we gather from this? So let's say I am the guy who is selling ice cream in this particular village. Well, I notice that every time I come to the village, loads of people buying strawberries. That's, but that's the most favorite one. And then the second favorite would be the mint choc chip. Okay, now the miscellaneous ones, I'm not too much bothered about. I'm not going to lose customers, you know. Not very many customers are buying pistachio, but there's just that one or two that's buying pistachio. What does that mean for me then? Well, what it means for me is when I'm coming to this village and I'm buying stock, I know that I need to stock up on strawberries because on the strawberry um, flavor ice cream, because in this particular village, 
These people love their strawberries. I know I need to stock up on the mint choc chip as well. I don't want to run the risk of running out of ice cream. So I want to satisfy all my customers. And by satisfying customers, I maximize my profit. So this is a very simple and rudimentary way of looking at bar charts. And just like that, that brings us to the end of this very, very simple topic on drawing bar charts. I'm going to see you on the next video. Peace.